Wellington's spectacular harbour. It was built over a hundred years ago as the Queen's Bond, a place to store goods from overseas on which duty had yet to be paid. There are many great taonga, treasures and stories here from a hundred years ago and longer. But the greatest stories go way back to when my people first came to Aotearoa. Our stories and legends have been handed on from generation to generation. And today, they're written about in books like this, so they can be shared with everyone. Did you know there was not always a harbour here at Tafanga Niniatara? Long, long ago, it was a lake. And in the lake, there lived sea creatures known as Tanifa. The Tanifa were called Fataitai and Nake. For a long time, they had talked about being free in the deep water of the ocean they could hear crashing on the far shore. One day, Naki, who was a restless, turbulent Tanifa, decided he would do something about gaining his freedom. He cruised down to the northeastern corner of the lake to Awakairangi, the Hutt River, where he wound himself up into a great fury. Then, twisting his tail up like a giant spring, he headed straight for the southeast at great speed and with much funny fun noise. Hissing and roaring, Nake crashed into the great wall of rock and earth. With such force, he smashed through it, forming to Awatane, the harbour entrance, and then continued into the deep waters of Rokawamoana, the Cook Strait. The rock Tarawarua Kupe, or Steeple Rock, the rock Te Tangihanga, or Kupe, also known as Barrett Tree, and the rocks on the eastern side of the harbour entrance at Matauranga are all the wreckage of Nake's great push to freedom. When Fataitai attempted to follow Nake's escape, he did not realise that his friend had let the tides into the lake. He became stuck in the shallows, where he remained for many generations, with just enough water covering him to keep him alive. But when Taho Whenua occurred, the great earthquake of around 1460, Fataitai was lifted up out of the water, his skin dried, and he died. So the open harbour through which ships pass today was created by the Tanifangake, who was never seen or heard of again after breaking out. The land that links the old island of Tumutukairangi, also known as the Miramar Peninsula, was formed from the back of the dead Tanifa, the Thaitai. It is said that one day, Nake would return for his brother, the Thaitai. What's that? <laughs> if I didn't know better, I'd say Nake has returned. Impossible. The Tommy Fire long, long gone. Oh, I can't see a thing. Maori tales are filled with the name Maui, a mischievous demigod who was responsible for many wondrous as well as strange occurrences in the legends of New Zealand. One night, feeling particularly mischievous, Maui put out all the fires in the village just to see what would happen. At dawn the following morning, there was a great commotion in the village. The cooking fires were dead. Maui's mother ordered him to go to Makuika, his grandmother, and collect fire from her and bring it back to the village. 
Marika was the source of all fire. She was the goddess of fire. Go to your grandmother now, Maui's mother commanded. But don't play tricks on her and don't tease her because she will punish you. Maui left the village and followed the path his mother told him to take and eventually arrived at the house of fire. Who are you? His grandmother demanded. I am your grandson, the young man replied. Do you come from the direction of the wind that is blowing in my face, she asked. I? I do, Maui said. <laughs> then you are my grandson, Maui Tiki Tiki Ataranga. What do you want from me? I have come to ask for fire, Maui said. All the fires in our village have gone out. That is not a problem, the old woman sighed as she pulled the nail from her little finger. As she did so, it burst into flame. Here, she said, take this back to the village and light all the fires with it. Maui took the flaming nail, thanked Mahamika, and headed home. But he had not gone far before he mischievously dropped the fiery fingernail into a stream. He went back to Mahuika and told her the fire had gone out. She pulled out the nail from her third finger, which burst into flame as she handed it to him. Take care of this one, Maui, she warned. Again, Maui set off on the path to his village. And again, he dropped the fingernail into the stream. Maui continued his trickery on the old woman. He wanted to see what would happen when she gave him the last of her fire. When he returned for her last fingernail, Mahuika screamed at him. You're playing tricks on me, you wicked boy! As she tore out her only remaining nail, it roared into flame, and she threw it to the ground. The whole place caught fire. Take it all, she cried. terrified by its grandmother's awesome power and ran for his life. Before the fire could catch him, he turned himself into Kahu the hawk and flew back towards his village. The people of Maui's village soon discovered the seeds of the fire hiding in the trees of the forest and from that day on the fire was released by rubbing together the dry sticks of those trees. There are many wonderful Māori legends that try to explain the miraculous creations of Aotearoa, land of the long white cloud.